and welcome to Mark's Madness. Joined by Mark Shine, I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, basketball season is officially here. Last week, we didn't have any games to talk about yet on the boys' side. Now we have, I don't even know where to start. There were so many <laughs> games right. and a lot of storylines. Let's dive right in with where you were at the Elida tip-off. What did we, what's the takeaway? What did we learn from the Elida tip-off? Well, Matt, I was out there both nights, and I think one of the things we look at is the Thunderbirds are good, okay? We knew that they were going to graduate some people, and they had some you know, guy move on to a different school, but they're still good. Trey Cobbs is a good point guard, but Dixon plays as much point guard as Trey. There's kind of no drop-off whatsoever defensively. Trey Cobb's a little bit better offensively. Dantez Walton, very good inside. He can now step out and make the three. Um, Jake Williams, load inside. They're good. And then they have a lot of good role players. The two O'Connors, Cam White. I'm going to leave some guys out, and I apologize for that. But they're very deep as well. Frank Kill does a nice job coaching them. It's a good basketball team at Lime Central Catholic. And help them earn that championship at the Elida tip-off. And just talking with Aaron Matthews, who does their games for radio, he was impressed with their rebounding abilities. They out-rebounded their opponents by at least 20 in each game. Absolutely, and I think that's going to be a strength for them. Now, the teams they played, I think that might be a weakness for them as well. So it's kind of a magnifying on both sides of the issue. But, yeah, they get to the glass. Jake Williams is double figures, all-tournament team. Dantez Walton's all-tournament team. He rebounds well. And they get enough rebounds from the other guys that, yeah, they're a good rebounding team. Shawnee played well in this tournament, and they made it to the championship game. What did you like out of the Indians? Well, obviously they got guard play that can score. Uh, Tucker and O'Neal both can score the basketball. They're not necessarily great shooters, although they can do that too, but they score. They go to the basket, they get fouled, they get an offensive rebound or two, they can do something in transition and shoot the ball as well, so they're scorers, not just shooters. And Bath, Renner hit a big three to send it to overtime in that consolation game, and then Bath ended up winning by three. Bath and Elida, what, what, what can we expect out of those two schools? Well, first of all, I think in the case of Bath, they're young and experience-wise. Andrew Renner, Dylan Burkle are the only guys with a lot of experience coming back, and so they're trying to get, Coach Allen's trying to get a lot of young guys involved. It was a good win for them to come out of the tip-off one and one, but they're going to struggle until they get some depth and some experience with that bas basketball team. Elida needs to get healthy. Uh, I was very surprised Allmeyer played and as well as he was able to play. Uh, he had a huge ankle sprain. I saw pictures of it. It was one of the worst things you've ever seen. Uh, ankle sprain wise, but he played and played very well on Friday night. Um, they got good play also out of Clark Etzler, but they need to get Jason Sarno back too. He's, he's got an ankle injury. He's in a boot. When they get everybody healthy, I think Coach Thompson have a pretty good basketball team. Absolutely, and we're going to take a look at a play for a couple of plays actually from that Elida Shawnee, Elida Shawnee game, that opening game of the uh, tip-off classic in a little bit. But for now, let's move on to the Van Wert tip-off tournament, yeah. another exciting tournament featuring a state defending state champion in Crestview and a team that I think is we can look at to make a deep run, and that's who ended up winning, Wayne Trace. Yeah, Wayne Trace is really good. Um, Coach Linder's got a nice program, helps to have your two sons and both of them be good players. Um, I think what uh, Ethan was in double figures at 30, over 30 both yeah. nights. Um, he's a tremendous player, but he's got a lot of com complimentary players around him. It's a very good group at Wayne Trace. How deep they'll go in the tournament, that, that's hard to say at this point in the season. It's very early. Yeah, we've just played uh, one weekend of basketball games, but they're good. And they're going to play some good competition in and outside of their league. Um, Crestview, you know, Crestview comes back and, and they're one and one on the, on the weekend, but that's good when you graduate as many guys as they did from a year ago. If you really want to get a handle on what's going to happen in the tournament, Crestview and Wayne Trace match up in the middle of February, a game we're going to telecast here on WOSN, and that'll be a really good preview of how both teams have grown through the course of the season and then what they're going to do tournament-wise. That'll be a good one. And remember, they played three times last year. Crestview yep. got the better of them all three times. Right. But this year, Wayne Trace hands Crestview its first loss in over a year. Yeah, since 12. Yeah, that's about that. But, you know, Coach Best, I think the real key to that was Coach Best is one of the best defensive coaches around. He gave up 30 to one guy in 61 in the game. And that's a lot of points for a night team to give up. So obviously they could score at Wayne Trace. Lincoln View also played in that tournament, lost by a combined four points, yeah. both games by two points. Very close, and the Lancers were competitive. They were. Surprised me a little bit because their guard play graduated from a year ago, but they've done a nice job for Coach Hammonds trying to replace them. Um, uh, tough losses both nights, but uh, they're going to be competitive in the Northwest Conference. And Van Wert, of course, the host, also competitive. We'll break down the WBL. Let's do that now. Salina, they look good. OG looks good, and we already talked about Bath and, and Shawnee and some other teams. Yep. And what, 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 WBL's up for grabs, I see. That's how I see it. I, I think, uh, Matt, I think there's really three really good teams in that conference. Um, I think you look at the top, certainly we're, we're going to talk about uh, you know, how good OG is going to be. 
Um, they have Noah Bramlage back, a D1 player, and they graduated a bunch of guys, but their JV team was outstanding a year ago, and those players are going to go up and filter in and be around Noah Bramlage, and I look for OG to have a very good year. He had a big win over Brian this past weekend. On paper, the favorite is probably Salina. They have four returning starters, plus Caleb Hoingback, who's kind of their, their best sub a year ago. Um, they had a tremendous summer. In fact, some people, they've got Ryan Hoying, who could well be the player of the year in the conference, but Caleb Hoying, in some situations, outplayed him in the summertime. So it's a very talented team down there uh, in Salina right now. And I think the third team at the top of the heap probably would be Defiance. When you have Singleton, who's going to go to uh, the University of Findlay and play, and Coach Lehman, who does an outstanding job of preparing his teams, those are probably the three best teams in the conference, and those three are probably wide open. Defiance went on a deep postseason run last year as well. When, when you get into these games, and I, we haven't had any conference, well, we've had some conference games at the tournaments, but with the WBL, what are you looking to get out of this first weekend? At, any doesn't matter what conference, actually. Well, this, this weekend, what are we trying to learn? What are we trying to get out of our teams? Well, the first of all, you can only scrimmage and practice so long. You got to get on the floor, and you got to have game situations and play on the floor. And that's what happened. A lot of teams play once or twice this particular weekend. And then this week in practice is the best week of practices the whole year. You've got game film, you can break that down, you, get your, you go back and do your drill situations, your shell games, and your five on five situations that you put through. This week you can now do in practice all the things that you saw last weekend that need to be corrected and improved. Plus, you've scouted your opponents from the previous weekend, so now you can start putting together a game plan as well and scheming for that type of thing. The track starts league play this weekend. Um, Shelby County League's already started league play, and so for most teams, league play doesn't start this weekend. It does the following weekend, but um, you, you want to get ready for that league week coming up pretty quick. Time for a break here on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some of the plays from that Elida Shawnee game in the opening round of that tip-off tournament at Elida. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Mark's Madness, and it's time to break down a play. And Mark, you picked out a couple of plays from the Elida Shawnee game in that tip-off tournament. And let's take a look at those. Show You can show us what you saw on these plays well, coming the from first the coach's the, perspective. First, the back screen lob that Elida runs. The key is the pass has to be high enough, and you have to get this really good screen right there at the top of the circle. Here comes our back screen lob. Part of it was the defense thought that Josh Press was going to get a shot at the three-point line, so they go that direction. This is a nice out-of-bounds play. Both defenders switch off of the white shirt of the Elida player, and the man taking the ball out of bounds can read the play very easily. Here's the screen right here, and both players go to the single receiver, and there's Logan Alexander stepping out for the jump shot. Good job by the screener, but then also to read it. Here's the game winner. You gotta be careful if he gets fouled right here, it's all over, but a nice high jumper over 6'5", Jazz Howell with long arms, and that uh, won the basketball game by Jaden O'Neill over Elida. Uh, three nice plays, and it, w it went fast, but I hope everybody at home can get to see what you saw in those plays because the only reason those plays were successful was what was going on beforehand with all that screening going on right. up top, especially on the backdoor lob play, and uh, plays that will look for Denny Thompson to continue to run throughout the season. Well, time for another break here on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some of the games we've got our eye on for this week, and, and we're also going to continue to talk about the map on the hardwood. Stay right here. Welcome back to Mark's Madness, third and final quarter here for us, Mark. And let's talk about the NWC because Spencerville had a, a loss to St. Henry, and it was pretty decisive, that, that loss. It really was. And for a home game, I thought it was a little bit surprising. Not that St. Henry won, but the spread of the game and being at Spencerville. I think part of that is the layover from Spencerville and, and the extra football games that they played. Some of their guys were a little beat up coming into practice time. I think that's part of it. This will still be a good Spencerville team that will challenge for the NWC Conference. But it also speaks to St. Henry's talent. A couple guys with 20-point 20 20 figure games. Uh, Mike Sell led them in scoring. Um, they had a tough loss to Rushi on Saturday night, did St. Henry, but Rushi is really, really good in the SCAL, so that's not a bad loss. Um, but two good teams, Spencerville and St. Henry, but a big win for, uh, for St. Henry Redskins. Of course, Mike's out committed to Dayton. Yep. He actually has already signed to play at Dayton, so Division I talent there. 
And for Spencerville, I think they could be a little banged up from football. I mean, Goki is one of their best players on the basketball court, and he just ran and ran and ran for, you know, 11 weeks. Right, and not only that, but he also plays linebacker. So he's getting hit the entire football game with, uh, you know, different positions, different sets. Um, I understand he didn't practice a lot early in their preseason. He had 19 the other night, you know, four three-point field goals. But he will be better, so will their entire team. Um, I really like what the Bearcats do over there for Coach Sensenball. Who else are you looking at in the NWC? We kind of already well, touched on Crestview, obviously, but anybody else? Well, those two are probably the favorites, but it's kind of hard to get a handle on the rest of the conference. We know Lincoln View was one and one. Dolphus Jefferson won two games. Trey Smith had big scoring mm -hmm. nights. Stockwell had a big scoring night, so they won a couple of games. Bluffton won a couple of games over McComb, who's pretty good, and Perry, who's now had a couple of tough losses by a couple of points both times, so, so they can be in the mix. Uh, I'm not sure there is a clear-cut favorite in the conference. Certainly, you can mention uh, Spencerville and Crestview at the top, and don't leave out Paul. We always seem to forget about what Coach Brewer does because they're kind of on the far end of our viewing area. But they had a good weekend start as well. Gonzalez had a big scoring game for them. So Paulding will be in the mix as well. NWC up for grabs, just like it, it really was is. for football. Like, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll extend and it I into think, the winter. I think that's a really good analogy, Matt. Football, we didn't know where we were at from week to week in that conference, and it may well be the same this year in basketball. Well, speaking of conferences in football, Mac the MAC, three football <laughs> state titles. Right. What about on the hardwood? St. Henry, we talked about they're off to a great start, but we have to look at Versailles as well and Kyle Arns. Well, if Kyle Arns gets back and gets healthy, that makes a difference. I, I think the, the whole MAC conference, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen in that thing right now because St. Henry, Coldwater, and Marion Local haven't put their basketball teams on the floor yet. And one of the problems they will have is trying to jam all those games into January and February when right. they back up and if they get to the weather situations which causes postponement, that makes it even worse for those particular schools. But they haven't played yet. DSJ hasn't played yet. So I don't think we have any idea where the MAC conference is going to be. What we do know is there'll be a league game this week because Versailles has to play their last league game before anybody else gets started because Versailles tournament, sexual tournament, starts before everybody else. So they're already a league game in the MAC coming up on Friday night oh, for wow. Versailles. And with Kyle Arnes, situation you know nobody knows exactly where he stands the Michigan State recruit and his stress factor and when he'll be able to play but until he gets back on the floor Versailles won't be as talented as they should be. Interesting how the schedule worked out for Versailles there. Now Lima Senior their own one yeah. they lost to Wapak which was a team we didn't even mention in our WBL talk but right. they were impressive in a victory over Lima Senior. Now this comes with a caveat because Lima Senior's three new transfers did not play in the game for a disciplinary reason but Wapakoneta still did what it needed to do and got a very nice home victory. They really did. And I, I intentionally left them out because you wrote on the script down here at the bottom, Lima Senior Wapak. Oh, so we're going to talk about that now. <laughs> we, All yeah, right. we intentionally it left went, them out. Right. What a great win for, for Coach Selvey. You know, talk about game plan. Except for the third quarter, they were playing the way they wanted to play the entire night. You know, they held on to the basketball. They made a few three-point field goals when they needed to. They were solid defensively. They didn't let pressure rattle them. They did some in the third quarter. But when they got behind, they rallied back and they made a great play and, and, and won the basketball game because of that. That's a really good win for them. Yeah, Lima Senior, new coach with Coach Simpson. A lot of new guys in the program. They're on the road for the first game. Some disruption because of those suspensions that you mentioned. They'll be okay, but they have a big league game this weekend with Toledo St. John's, who had a close loss the other night and is always one of the most talented teams in the track. That's a big start for Lima Senior this weekend. And then follow that up with a game on Saturday against Salina. It doesn't get any yeah. easier. A game that I get to call. I'm really looking forward to that because we know how talented Salina is supposed to be. We know they got a win last weekend and it's be it down at Lima Senior. They have both home games. Spartans are home both nights this weekend. Looking forward to that this weekend. Have a chance to call that game. Keaton Metz, the big buzzer beater in the game mm -hmm. for Wapakoneta over Lima Senior. Be on the lookout for that this week on WOSN, rebroadcast of that game. Mark Koontz and I had the call. You were sitting courtside. I was. It was a busy gym yep. at Wapak. It was exciting. Meanwhile, we'll have a ton of other rebroadcast games. Let's run that down for you right now, and it starts on Friday night, WOSN, 9 p.m., OG versus Bath Girls. Bath and OG Girls teams both at yep. the top of that Western Buckeye League. We, we figure they will, they will be coming yeah, on this would be a good matchup unfortunate that is the first conference game for both schools you know to play right. this early and but that's where the schedule fell WTLW Friday after the sports report 1044 Lipsick versus Liberty Benton also WOSN, WOSN 1030 Friday New Bremen versus Versailles that's that Mac matchup mm -hmm. Mark was talking about WOSN Saturday 730 Allen East versus Shawnee Right, followed up by Van Wert versus Ottoville, and then follow that up with Bluffton versus Bath. Triple header, all boys games starting at 7.30 on Saturday, West Ohio Sports Network. Then Saturday after the sports report, 10.30 WTLW OG versus LB. 
Another good one. Yep. That one could be good. And then Sunday, we've got three more for you. Anniverse Fort Warmie Girls, that will debut at 6 on WOSN. And then a doubleheader starting at 7.30 of boys games. That's the Lima Lina, Lina Senior game. It'll be good. And then St. John's versus Elida. So a ton of hoops action coming your way this week on the West Ohio Sports Network. That's going to do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. Thanks so much, Mark Shine. Great job, as always. And we'll see you next week here on Mark's Madness.